Welcome to this video, everyone. In this video, I'm going to be giving my rankings of the Star Wars films from least favorite to my favorite. I could have and I wanted to do this video when The Rise of Skywalker came out, but at that point, I still wasn't entirely sure what I thought about The Rise of Skywalker. I'd only seen it once, but then after seeing it a second time and multiple viewings afterwards, I figured, you know what? Okay, now I my feelings are cemented about this film, and I can go ahead and rank it in the context of the other Star Wars films. So here we go with these rankings. Uh, I'll be ranking from least favorite to favorite. I will not be including that piece of shit uh, animated Clone Wars movie, although as you can guess, that would be last on my list. That film was absolute garbage. So here we go, ranking all, this, all the films in the Star Wars series from least favorite to favorite. At number 11, we have Star Wars Episode 1. The Phantom Menace. Uh, this was by far the least favorite, my least favorite on this list. This was a no-brainer. This film's really just a bunch of nonsense. It's bad filmmaking on all accounts. It's a bad story, bad really sort of character development. Bad production, bad CGI, bad comedy. Obviously, with Jar Jar, he's the thing that really stands out as the thing that sort of sinks the film. He's just flopping, dancing all around, just all over the place. Just bad comedy with him all over the place. Uh, to quote him in that film, Pulusa. And yeah, the film just really just doesn't, doesn't have a whole lot, really anything that's all that good going for it. Besides maybe sort of the lightsaber fight at the end with Darth Maul. Even stuff people like, like the pod racing scene, for me, that scene just goes on for way too long. Even though I loved all of them pod racing memes that came with that scene. So that's the only thing, good thing, one of the only good things to come from this movie was that. But yeah, this film, as Jar Jar Binks says, Pulusa. At number 10, we have Solo, A Star Wars Story. Uh, yeah, I when I first saw this film, I really just did not like it. I just was just like, it was just remarkably unspectacular. Upon viewings afterwards, my feelings sort of softened on it. I don't think it's terrible by any means. As I said, it's just remarkably unspectacular. You know, it just sort of did sort of the bare minimum to keep my interest for sort of a movie like this. A movie like this, I actually don't think it was a bad idea to make a solo origin story, but all the stuff they did, it just came together into sort of a package. I was just like, well, I guess that was kind of all right. Alden Aaron Wright as Han Solo, he actually wasn't all that bad. He actually, he was solid as Han Solo. All the other performances were good too. Like I said, just the story and just sort of the level of excitement that you feel while watching this movie, really not all that that there and the ending is just remarkably sort of unspectacular as I keep saying there just wasn't anything grand or just like ooh all that great about it and you can feel that after the movie was reshot the hell out of after they had to fire the directors so Solo a Star Wars story comes in at number 10 and number nine, we have Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones. For a lot of people, they put this as sort of the worst out of all the Star Wars movies. Well, maybe before the new Disney movies came out. But yeah, people had a lot of people have this ranked lower than The Phantom Menace, and I definitely do not agree with that. I actually get sort of a decent amount of enjoyment with this film. It's a much better put together film than The Phantom Menace. It's got some good stuff going for it. It's better storytelling, it's better production, better filmmaking, better performances for the most part it's just an overall better movie and I, I like all the stuff they put together like finally getting to see yoda lightsaber fight for the first time some of the stuff they did with that uh the only problem the main main problem with this movie is that it was just too long at the time it came out it was by far the longest star wars movie that had been put out and you really feel it sort of kind of starts to drag once it gets to the gladiator scene towards the end of the film but other than that a lot of uh, like i said most of the stuff they did i actually didn't think this was that bad of a star wars movie at number eight we have star wars the last jedi uh, yeah, definitely one of the most controversial, controversial films of my lifetime. People, this movie just divided the Star Wars community for good reason. Because on one hand, I think it's a solidly produced movie. Actually, a very good produced movie. It's got some good stuff going for it. I really love the stuff between Rey and Kylo Ren. That was the heart of the movie, and I thought that was by far sort of the best part. It's got some fun action scenes going forward. Love that red room scene. But oh my god, this film just has some stuff that just absolutely stinks. Like General Haldo, that whole side story, did not like that. The horseback riding scene in Canto Bite. All of this Canto Bite stuff to begin with just was not all that good. With the pointless stuff with the code breaker. And then the way Luke Skywalker went out, it was just all like, oh, really? So even though this movie had some really good stuff going for it, uh, just the bad stuff it had going for it. So like, yeah, there's no denying the bad stuff in this movie. But even still, like I said, the fact that it still was well produced and there was still some good stuff going for it. I don't hate it as much as most people. I don't think it's actually a, a bad movie, but maybe it's just a bad Star Wars movie is the best way to put it. 
And number seven, we have Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, yeah, I wasn't entirely sure what I thought about this one when I kept to, but when I watched it upon the second viewings, I was like, okay, not a bad movie, but it's just got some questionable decisions from a Star Wars perspective and sort of from a filmmaking perspective. Like, why the hell didn't they officially reveal in the movie what Finn was going to say to Rey? That kind of stuff. Sort of the stuff they went to do with, like, how they treated uh, General Hux. What they did was sort of the objects, all the MacGuffins and stuff like that. Obviously, Rey's lineage, stuff like that. But at the same time, you still had good stuff. JJ brought some good humor back from The Force Awakens. I like that stuff. The team dynamics between Ray, Poe, and Kylo Ren, that was good also. And there was a good amount of fan service they put into the film, which at times can be a bad thing depending on your perspective. But for me, it's your only chance you're going to get to see that stuff in this movie. I just wish the stuff they did with the Emperor, they had tied up a bit neater just because he's obviously the driving force of this movie. And it's really kind of like, why is he back? Well, hey, you know what? Fuck it. Don't worry about it. So Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker wrapped up the, the Star Wars saga. And I got to say, when you get to the ending, it's all like, okay. That shot of Luke and Leia. That's good stuff right there. So Rise of Skywalker comes in at number seven. At number six, we have Star Wars Return of the Jedi. The finale of the original trilogy. I used to have sort of mixed feelings about this movie. Just because while it did sort of wrap things up in sort of a good fashion and was emotional and stuff between Luke and Darth Vader. Oh my God, the Ewoks just absolutely killed this movie in my opinion. I absolutely cannot stand the Ewoks. Every time they get to that Endor planet and then you get to the stuff with them treating C-3PO as the god and them just mooping and fucking around all over the place. I'm all like, what the hell happened here? You know, why, why am I watching the Muppet show all of a sudden? Like I said, man, all the stuff they did, it was just it was just, it was just too much, especially coming off a movie like Empire Strikes Back, which was just so dark and just so brilliant. And then you come to this movie and it's Star Wars episode uh six the muppet show yeah just wasn't a big fan of that but it is a fun adventure the stuff with jabba the hut at the beginning and really great stuff with luke versus darth vader at the end of the film man that's just some emotional great stuff a great ending to that story so return of the jedi comes in at number six at number five we have star wars the force awakens the first installment of the disney era of star wars and yes this film is notorious now for its reputation and what it did but basically sort of being a carbon copy of a new hope or copying a whole lot of the elements for me it didn't become a problem in the film until you got to the end and they were going on another trench run mission to blow up another death star i was all like wait what they're doing this shit again that kind of bothered me but all the original elements just moving back to the table, I thought were brilliant. I loved Rey. I loved the whole mission with her and uh, Finn starting that kind of journey. bb 8s obviously great. And I thought of the film was a good blend of new school and old school coming together to make a brand new adventure for the Star Wars series. And it just was that emotional bit of it being the first installment and the sequel trilogy coming off all these years after Return of the Jedi. So that's why Star Wars The Force Awakens is at number five. And number four, we have Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. Uh, yeah, this film got pretty goddamn epic once it got to the end. Unfortunately, a lot of this movie is a uh, kind of bad. Just not very good at all. I'm talking about mainly the middle section. Once you get to the stuff where it's like Obi-Wan sort of dicking around doing his iguana riding. It's all like, what the hell am I watching? But I thought the movie got off to a great start. The whole thing with... Uh, Anakin and Obi-Wan going on that mission to sort of go after Count Dooku, the stuff with that. And at the heart of the movie is, is obviously Anakin turning to the dark side. And once Order 66 goes out, that's great stuff right there. From then on, the movie, like that last 40 or 50 minutes, just great stuff. Once you get sort of the, the dueling scenes of when you get Yoda versus the Emperor, and obviously the final battle between Luke and Obi-Wan Kenobi. A uh, fucking fantastic stuff right there. And when you get to the ending, where it's a uh, baby Luke, and then it's his aunt and uncle looking into the sunset. Mm, just great stuff right there. Absolutely love it. So Coming in at number three is Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. This was the first ever anthology Star Wars film that we got, sort of like a side story. This was a story of the group of rebels that went aboard to steal the Death Star plans. It was obviously teased at the beginning, the beginning crawl of A New Hope, the original film. And man, this film was just brilliant, the way that it was executed. The film, it absolutely puts the war in Star Wars. It feels gritty. It feels like a real sort of like, just like kind of, kind of like a wartime film, sort of the back and forth between the rebels and the Empire, showing that even the rebels, they're not 
not perfect people. And they're really sort of creating sort of even a good sort of emotional story between sort of Jen Erso and her sort of kind of like, I don't know, the relationship with her dad and sort of the stuff that they did and the whole sort of meaning behind why the Death Star sort of has that fatal flaw. It was sort of cool how they sort of wrote around that to make it so, okay, it actually does make sense. And when you ask, and then when you get to the actual war at the end on that on that beach planet, whatever it's called, where the Death Star plans are actually getting stolen, my God, I love me a great final battle. And that final battle, when it comes in this film, just fantastic stuff, man. The stuff that you have when they're stealing Death Star plans, the battle going on the on the beach, then bringing the AT-ATs back, then when you have sort of the the air troops going up in space doing battle, and then on the beach doing battle, the the Star Wars, the X wings, oh man, oh just. It's so great every time you watch it and it's so well executed. A final battle can really make or break your movie. And this movie's ending section, that like last 40 minutes or whatever it was, uh, brilliant stuff. And I should mention it has my favorite droid that we've seen in any of the films, k 2 a soul What a great character. Hope I'm glad we're going to get to see more of him in that Cassian Disney Plus show that eventually is going to come out. So Rogue One, Star Wars Story, number three on this list. And number two is Star Wars, A New Hope, the original film. Yeah, the film that started it all, this film is just great on all accounts. Got a great story, the story of a hero rising. You got great villains with Darth Vader, and I love Admiral Tarkin in this film. Classic, great lines, great characters with Luke and Leia. Uh, just great aesthetics. It's just this whole thing, just bringing in this world and how much development went into this. Just this beginning film. At the time, you didn't have anything to sort of back it up. The film had to stand on its own, and all the mythology that they just put into this movie. Absolutely brilliant. And even for a film that... that that was made in 1977 it still just holds up and it's like you don't need to tinker or, or have any of those bullshit special editions with all that sloppy cg film just still looks great even today and all this stuff is why the star wars saga is what it is right now but it is only number two on this list because at number one we have Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, big surprise, this is everyone's number one, but it's number one for good reason, just because it's a brilliant film. The level of darkness and contrast where you have a new hope, which was sort of lighter in tone when it comes to sort of the, uh, how you felt about the film and sort of the journey, where this film was sort of a lot darker when it came to the story. It just felt like the stakes were really sort of ramped up, but just the level of character development, all that stuff with Luke and his training, the romance between Han and Leia, the villains, Darth Vader was at his absolute peak right here and then she had cool stuff with boba fett going on new characters introduced with lando and obviously the final section on uh, cloud city and that battle between luke and luke and uh, darth vader brilliant stuff you know the film is what it is and the reason it's the reason why people say uh this movie is the empire strikes back of the series when you're talking about saying like the dark knight is the empire strikes back of the nolan trilogy just because the because this because this film is the reason is the standard why people expect a whole lot out of star wars and unfortunately no film no star wars film has been able to top it since but hey you know what this film set a high standard and hey god bless it for it so there you go with my rankings for the Star Wars films from least favorite to favorite. Uh, yeah, for the most part, like I said, it was tough to rank Rise of Skywalker initially, but I think I put it in sort of a good place. Overall, I don't, when it comes to each trilogy, the original trilogy is definitely the best. Prequel trilogy is sort of a mixed bag, but I, def but I definitely have come to appreciate it and I love Revenge of the Sith. And the Disney trilogy sort of is what it is. I know it has the reputation of being kind of like bad, but it's had, it's had its sort of good moments. Uh, overall, I thought it was solidly done and definitely well produced, even though they didn't make some questionable decisions. But there you go for my rankings right here so that'll do it for this video i hope y'all enjoyed and thank you for watching